Tell you about the mark of the beast and the antichrist real quick. Okay, uh, mark of the beast is going to be a, a, a global world system that you won't be able to, to participate in unless you reject Jesus Christ. This system, this system, you won't be able to buy, trade, or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. And then if you and if you don't become a part of it, they'll kill you and your family and all that stuff. So, one thing about the Mark of the Beast is they, they have this chip called the RFID chip, which is Radio Frequency ID chip. The Lord identified through, through his prophets that that is the Mark of the Beast, and you can't accept it. You can't let them implant it in you. No, don't let them put it in you as a tattoo. Don't ingest it, and don't let them implant it in your right hand. Like the Bible says in Revelation, it said no man will buy, trade, or sell without the Mark. And then they get they get the uh, mark of the beast in their in their right hand and in their forehead. That's what the that's what the word of God says. And it says that any man that takes the mark of the beast, you're gonna come down with these grievous sores. And also, God's not gonna let you into heaven because that's the ultimate form of treason. This RFID chip. It's a GMO, so if you take it, it's going to kill you. Eventually, the chip is going to kill you itself, and so you'll lose your life. And on top of that, you'll lose your soul. So the Antichrist, he's going to be a flesh man that's going to come on the scene, and he's going to be having supernatural powers that he gets from the devil. And he's going to be able to do miracles right in front of you. And so he's going to go into the temple over there in Jerusalem and pretend to be God. And all that stuff like that. So this guy, I mean, when he comes on the scene, he's going to be a smooth talker. Everybody's going to be in love with him because at first he's going to be uniting all the religions and bringing about world peace and all that stuff. And then the aliens, the, the UFOs, which are really demons posing as aliens, are going to come down and confirm him. Like, yeah, this is the guy and this is God and we're on God's side and all this bunch of nonsense. Let me tell you how the real God comes back. When Jesus Christ returns back, he ain't doing world peace. He's coming back as a conqueror. And he first thing he does, he burns up his enemies with fire that comes out of his mouth from the word. His word sets people on fire. The, the word coming from Jesus cuts like a sword and, and, and devours up all his enemies. And people that's all underground, those Satanists, they're going to be trying to hide out and all that stuff. And they ain't going to be able to hide out because they're going to see him coming even through the rocks. So he's going to make sure of that. So that's how the real Jesus Christ comes back. He comes back as a God. A God that's putting fire on his enemies. It won't, it won't be no mistakes. But before that, there's going to be false Christ and, and, and rising up like fake Jesus Christ. And then the, the, the Satanists and all these enemies going to be saying, yeah, we got Jesus in the secret place. Come with us and we're going to show you Jesus and all that stuff. It's going to be fake. But the real Jesus... You ain't, ain't nobody got to go show you the real Jesus Christ. When he comes, every eye is going to see him at the same time. So there's there's no mistake. That's the most grand entrance there is. So don't fall for any of that other stuff. Don't fall for the Antichrist pretending to be God because he got a little bit of powers that he got from the devil and, and, and technology. Because they, they, with Project Blue Beam, they can make holograms of any religious figure that you want to think of just to fool you. So don't fall for any of that stuff. Uh, if they tell you you can't eat and, and we're going to kill your children or we're going to do all this and that, hey, you still can't deny Jesus. You got to hang on to Jesus no matter what because guess what? Jesus Christ died for us. You know, he took our penalty on the cross. You know, where all of us have sinned and, and was worthy of, 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 you know, the ultimate punishment. But Jesus said, hey, I'll take their punishment for them. He said that to the Father. So he took our place on the cross so that we can have a chance to live with God and Jesus in heaven. So we can't wimp out and we can't deny them just so we can eat food or, or, or feed our family or save our own lives. You know, that's a coward move. So we can't do that. And if you do that, it's unforgivable. And don't think you're going to take the mark of the beast and then try to cut it off you later on and stuff because that thing ties into your nervous system. So once you have it, they can pretty much control you. You know what I mean? So if you, you have it, it's it. That's a wrap. You know what I mean? And then they can control you just like a robot. You won't be able to repent. And if you ain't doing what they said, they can send a signal to that chip and it'll cause you great pain in your body. So do not take the RFID chip. Do not take the mark of the beast. Hang on to Jesus with all you got. And don't fall for no fake Jesuses, no false Jesus. Because Jesus ain't going to come back as no flesh man to be hiding out in some secret place or some flesh Jesus, somebody walking around. No. 
When the real Jesus Christ come back, he come back as God. And the first thing he's doing is burning up his enemies. He came peaceful the first time. And what did they do to him? They killed him. They murdered him. They were jealous of him. You know what I mean? So this stuff is getting pretty serious. All right? So uh, I'll tell you about the Noahide laws. The Noahide laws put teeth behind the mark of the beast system. Because the Noahide laws came from the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is the same punks that killed Jesus back in his day. Those losers. They, they murdered Jesus because they was jealous of him. Because Jesus was doing a good thing. He wasn't doing all that fake religion like you see in these, these fake churches now. That's all. Uh, Joel Osteen kind of churches. You know, just garbage. You know, just not even preaching the word. Just telling you what you want to hear. Not preaching against sin. Just being losers. So, no. Nah, Jesus came with the real word back then. And they hated him. And all those losers, they killed him. So today the Sanhedrin came with this thing called the Noahide Laws. The Noahide Laws is a bunch of laws. They sound like they make sense at first, but when you dig deep into it, one of the things about it is if the worship of Jesus Christ to the Noahide Laws is considered idolatry punishable by death. So that's how they'll be able to threaten you. And all that stuff going to work with this fake religious holy joke called the Antichrist. When Christ, when the real Christ comes back, he's going to burn that sucker up. And then did all those world powers just trying to fight against Jesus Christ, like he's a bad alien or something, he's going to wipe them out. He's going to mop the floor with them. You know what I mean? So, let's tell you, man, aliens and all that stuff, it's all local. They're not from faraway planets and all that. That's a bunch of garbage. Everything, we are in a closed system. Everything, the planets are all within the earth. The earth is the biggest. The earth is bigger than the sun, the moon, and everything. The earth is the biggest thing. The earth is bigger than the planets. Everything, God set up everything around the world, the earth. Everything is set up around the earth like a clock. The, system, the whole system is a closed system, and it runs like a clock. So ain't no aliens from faraway galaxies coming here and talking about they created us and all this garbage. They're fallen angels, and they're and they have... When they, made, when they had sex with human women, they caused giants to be in the earth. And when the giants died, their spirits roamed the world as demons. This is where the demons come from. So these little fake alien, little, little uh, light bulb head looking losers with the big black eyes, they're creating them down there in labs. You know, so they can have a body. All the, that body is is an interface for demons. And a demon controls that thing. And then down there in the underground bases, they got species that they're creating. Mix an animal and human hybrids, and they're gonna bring them out and say these are aliens from other worlds. They're from other planets and all this junk, and they're making them underground. You know what I mean? They ain't from far away galaxies. That's just to bring that out to fool you. That's why they give you all these movies, Avatar, and all this garbage, and all this aliens, light bulb head dudes, stealing people and kidnapping people in the saucers and all that stuff. So. The people that's being uh, taken on the saucers and all that crap, all this anti-gravity crap that, crafts that we can make. Anyway, when they get taken on the craft and they see that they're going up, they never go into outer space. They always go up and they go down under the water in the ocean or they go underground. So that's letting you know that that whole thing with the aliens is local. It's all local. It ain't, it ain't far away. And none of that. Okay? So just letting you know what time it is so you won't be fooled and all this stuff like this. So. Just get ready and just hang on to Christ with all you got. Learn that Bible because the word of God has power against demons. You know what I mean? The demons can't do anything without permission. They have to get permission either from you, from your sins, or from God. And the only reason they want you to sin, the demons, is so they, they can attack you. You know, when you get tattoos on your body, that's a that's an interface. That's an attack point for demons. Demons will, can attack that's, that's why they want you to get tattoos, so you ain't supposed to get tattoos according to the word of God. You know what I mean? So, all this stuff is knowledge for you, and let all these things that I'm telling you right now, let it be a blessing to you. Let it be seeds that spring up later, so you won't be fooled when, when it's some smooth talker uh, giving it. They're going to bring out cures. That, okay, let's check this out. They're going to bring out cures and give this, this Antichrist dude the credit. Like, he came up with it, or like the fallen angels or all these aliens like they came up with it. Listen, it's human beings right now making cures for everything left and right. And so the Satanists come up, they show up, they give these people money, and then they take these cures and hide them and shelve them. Or, or they murder the, the people that, that won't sell out. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So it's all a big old plan. It's just, just a big old plan. And they've been planning it out forever. So it's a big battles on right now. The Patriots and the good guys and God's forces against the Satanists. You know what I mean?
So that's what's going on right now in the world. So just learn Psalm 91, be able to say it in the face of the enemy. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God with all you got because he died for you. He gave up everything for you. He was so serious about you, his love for you, that he left his throne. The king left his throne and died for his people just to give you a chance to go to heaven to live with him. What other king done that? What other so-called God did that? None of them. They either want you to kill for them or something like that. But our God died for us. That's big. That's huge. Hey, you know what I mean? That's the real deal right there. That's, that's the God I serve. And this God is about love your neighbor as you love yourself. Bless those that curse you. Pray for your enemies. Come on now. Come on now. So that's the real deal right there. It's all about love. If you ain't got love, true love, you ain't got nothing. You know what I mean? And God, you know what he did? He made Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam and Steve. You know what I mean? So anything that's you, you're feeling like you want to be a woman and you're a man or you're a man, you want to be a woman. Don't you know that they put stuff in the soil to make you feel that way? Chemicals on purpose. Uh, uh, I think it's one's called atrazine. And they sprayed it on all the crops. And this chemical... It, it, it causes male frogs to produce eggs and ovaries and want to and wanna be with other male frogs. And in, 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 in males, human males, it makes your body produce estrogen. So this is why you're born feeling this way. It was all, it was all done on purpose. It was all done on purpose. But guess what? We love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Just letting you know what's going on. So you, you got to repent. Repent of, of, of what you're doing and just ask God to heal you and just know what's being done to you. These things are being done to you on purpose and that's why you're feeling that way because the reason that they want to promote that stuff anyway is because they're trying to reduce the population. They want to play God. They think they're God. They don't want to listen to God and His Word, the Bible, but they want to they want to play God themselves. See what I mean? They're hypocrites. And they get to decide who lives and dies. They got this stuff. The, uh, the Georgia Guidestones. We got all this stuff written on the Georgia Guidestones. Oh, we got to keep the population down to less than a billion or whatever it is. So what? They're the ones that get to live? Who, 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 how do they get to decide that they are worthy to live and all the rest of us? They look at us as weeds and stuff like that. So look, that's the enemy side. So you got to get with it. Get right. Get on God's side. Get on God's team side. And that's the Jesus Christ team side. Read that King James Bible, baby. Because that's, that's what he, he gave you instructions on how to make it to heaven. You know what I mean? Follow the four Gospels. Christ showed you what to do in the four Gospels. You know what I mean? People say, oh, Christianity killed this and that. No, he didn't. Catholics did that and back in them days. The Catholics came along and they was killing every, anybody that wouldn't convert to them. And they were killing us if they caught us reading the Bible. They didn't want us to read the Bible. They wanted us to follow their nonsense and their traditions. You know what I mean? I'm talking about back then, the ones that was killing us. I'm not talking about the Catholics today that believe in Jesus, you know what I mean? Because many of them are going to be in heaven. But you got to know your history and stuff like that. And you got to know what happened. When you follow somebody, you want to call yourself a Christian, you follow somebody, that means you follow the teachings of your leader. Jesus Christ was our leader and our Lord. What did he teach? He didn't teach killing him and his disciples. They didn't kill not one person. Not one person. Okay? So it says, thou shalt not kill. What that means is, thou shalt not murder. That's what that means. It don't mean thou shalt not kill. It means thou shalt not murder. So self-defense, you know, you have to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? You, you know, God didn't make you as a doormat. But you got to use common sense. You got to use discernment. And you got to use love. And you got to use mercy. You know what I mean? You're not going to let somebody run up in your house and harm and rape your family. You're going to defend at all costs. You know what I mean? And that's what that means. You know? So just got to use common sense, people. You know, and, you know, y'all have it. Just use it. You know, we all got it. We all got gifts. We all got talent. So, I just want you guys to know that I love y'all. Don't be offended with me because I'm telling you this because I love you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you nothing. You know what I mean? Because I don't like all that static and, oh, oh somebody getting mad because I told them something that's trying to help them. No, nah, you know, if I didn't care, I, I, because of that, I wouldn't tell you anything and let you just go ahead on and just worry about myself and just worry about me going to heaven and just say, forget y'all because y'all too hard-headed and y'all fuss back too much. So, no, I ain't worrying about all that. I'm going to tell you anyway, and that's true love. Well, I'll put up with whatever you throw my way because that's true love just to tell you the truth, just so you can have a, a chance in heaven. Well, you can see me in heaven, shake my hand and say, thank you, brother Eric. Thank you for telling me that stuff, man. You know, you made me mad at first, but hey, I'm here, here, here in heaven right now because what you said planted a seed in me and I thought about it and boom, here I am. Thank you, brother. So that's 
that's what I want to see in the end right there. You know what I mean? So don't be getting mad and all that stuff. Just, hey, look at the word, man. You know, listen, the devil controls information, okay? He controls the information. I mean, think about it. Right there in the Bible, it says the devil took Jesus up to a high mountain and showed him all the kings of the world, all the kingdoms of the world, and told Jesus, said, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all them kingdoms, okay? So that means that Satan hijacked them kingdoms, and that's how he offered it to Jesus. You know what I mean? He's trying to tempt Jesus with those kingdoms that he hijacked. You know, so he controls information. So that's why they're teaching you nonsense in school. Everything they try to teach you in school is against the Bible. Because these enemies, these devils, they want you to die. They want you to go to hell with them. You know, the demons. They already condemn and they just want company. That's what it's all about. Satan just wants company. So that's why he... Everything that's being taught is, is to go against the Bible so you won't have a chance. That's what it is. You got to wake up and see what the game is. That's the game right there in a nutshell. I'm going to break it down for you, okay? So that's what's going on, people. All right? God bless y'all. Hugs and kisses. From Bible prophecy warns of a flesh man coming on the scene with supernatural powers that he got from the devil. Well, he will use these supernatural powers to do miracles in the sight of men. And these miracles he will use to fool the entire world into thinking that he's God or Jesus Christ or try to replace Christ. I'm going to tell you about the mark of the beast and the Antichrist real quick. The Antichrist is going to be somebody that's going to be a hundred times worse than Hitler. But when he starts out, he's going to be... A beautiful speaker, uh, mesmerizing in appearance, and a man of peace. That's how he's going to present himself. And he's going to unite all the world's religions under him. And he's going to pretty much form a religious dictatorship that will kill anybody that doesn't bow down to him. First on his list will be to kill Christians. To take the place of Jesus Christ. And to claim that he's God. He's going to sit in the temple over in Jerusalem and pretend to be God. Well, his system is going to be financial, economic, and all that. And you won't, be, you won't be able to be a part of that system unless you take an oath to him and reject all your former faiths like Christianity and whatever else you believed in. And if you ain't willing to do that, it'll threaten your family and threaten your kids and threaten your mom to kill them first in front of you and then kill you. But if you're a Christian, you know that you got to stick with Christ no matter what, even if it means death, because Christ died for us. He gave us his all, you know, just so we could have a chance to live with him in heaven. So this uh, Mark of the Beast and Antichrist, it has teeth behind it because in 1991, these laws were introduced to the U.S. from the Sanhedrin called the Noahide Laws, and it's seven of them. But as you go deeper into these Noahide Laws, one of the tenets is... If you will not renounce Jesus Christ, the penalty is death because worshiping Jesus Christ to the Sanhedrin and the Noahide laws is considered idolatry. And so they'll murder you. These, the Sanhedrin is the same guys back in the Bible days that conspired against and murdered Jesus because they were jealous of Jesus because Jesus was like an innovator. You know, where they was all about that religion and exploiting people. But Jesus Christ came with the true faith, which was a family, family based doctrine where you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the Son. He's our Redeemer. He's our Healer. He's our everything. And He came to earth from heaven to show us how to do it. And the difference between him and all these other false gods is Jesus Christ is the only God that said he wasn't too good to die for his servants. So he left his throne in heaven and came down here and died. Took our penalty on the cross because we were sinners and we were worthy of whatever punishment we were supposed to get by the bad things we've done. But Christ said, you know what, Father? I'll take their punishment for them. And if they follow me, I'll, I'll lead them to heaven. So leave them in my hands so Christ is like our lawyer our defender our everything because Satan all he does is accuse us of all, accuse us of all the bad things we do he's like hey God look at what they're doing they're just like me so I get to take them into hell but Christ said hey if they follow me my blood is on them so they're mine and I can take them with me to heaven so that's what the deal is with Jesus Christ and this mark of the beast and antichrist system this antichrist figure he's gonna have supernatural powers and all that. He's going to have everything that he needs from the devil to fool mankind. But just know if you're a Christian, you can't 
go along with them just to save your life or to eat or anything like that because if you do God will reject you and you won't be able to go to heaven so you have to hold on no matter how hard it gets so it's letting everybody know about the Antichrist and the beast system alright guys make the right choice God bless you and I love you yeah I received an update today on the mark of the beast and uh, from a prophet of God and uh, she was telling me about the Lord was letting her know about the RFID chip that that goes in conjunction with the mark of the beast uh, do not take it do not let them inject you with it do not let them give it to you as a tattoo and do not ingest it like taking it like a tablet orally don't take it at all because taking the mark of the beast is unforgivable by God he will not forgive you at all if you take the mark of the beast and also that that RFID chip it, it, it is a GMO so once it's in you it's also gonna kill you and then on top of that you lose your soul too uh, to hell so have nothing to do with RFID chip I don't care how much convenience they they tell you it's gonna be in all this just don't take it all right people God bless I'm gonna read from the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of David he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth I know thy works behold I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but do lie behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, I'm reading from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and this relates to the Antichrist topic. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivable and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish 
because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you brethren beloved of the Lord because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth wherefore whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ therefore brethren stand fast hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack got his man and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown Three touchdown passes now for Mitchell Trubisky. And the Bears are in for six. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown Marty there. Marty looking forward. Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. Parkey adds the extra point, and that'll make this a six-point game. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. Now let's go! 319! 319! They go play action here on first down. Eluding the pressure right. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Swing, swing on the field, right. To the right. Here we go, 46. Right. Here we go, 46. Right. Throwing again. Prescott on second and 10. Over the middle, Cooper with it. And they work this well up field across the 45. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Here we go 46, 46. Here we go 46. Here we go, here we go. Four eight eight. Here we go 46, 46. First down throw for Prescott. And he backs it away, and it falls down incomplete. Kyle Fuller there defensively. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Go. 
Final play of the half, Prescott. He's going to float this one deep right side. And this is going to be intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys. Had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. Sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. to throw again. Rush. On the crossing route, he hits his man, Amari Cooper. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 46. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And that is incomplete here. Cooper again the target, and it's second down. So this is what happens when you throw interceptions, that confident veneer that you have. It's chipped away a little bit, maybe a little bit gun-shy throwing it around. Yeah, under-throwing him there, and you're right. Those interceptions may be in the back of his mind. On second down, Prescott again. Steps away to it, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Leonard Floyd in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Throwing on third and long. Rush. Cooper's got it. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. And this is caught. It's Cooper. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Prescott to throw it. That's caught at the 3. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Three yards is the game that time. Second and goal. From the two now, second and goal. Lampert! Detroit! Detroit! And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. His pass caught at the four. And this will result in him losing yardage back to the three. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. From back at the three now, this is third and goal. White looks to throw. They'll roll him out right. He may try and run for this. 
So no sack. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it'll still bring up a fourth down. Well, there was pressure all around him, so the only play was to try and get out of there. I think it was an excellent effort by him just to get back to the line of scrimmage. And forthcoming, a field goal try for the Cowboys. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And his kick is right there. It's good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now Trubisky to throw. And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. Randy Gregory. Who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. Back now at Soldier Field. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Let's see what they draw up here. Third and long following the sack of Trubisky. Off the play fake. Here's Trubisky. And he's going to go down again. Demarcus Lawrence in there to drop him. And back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. They're going on fourth down. It's Trubisky. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Randy Gregory in there yet again. My goodness, make it five sacks for him now in this one game alone. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Now White. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. Well, I don't think we'll have to look very hard to find our play of the game. That was an absolutely monstrous big play right there. Backs to the wall. The offense has it in the red zone. Driving for the winning score. And he says, not on my watch. And that is one happy bunch on the sidelines. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. So a little breathing room now. First and 10 at the 17. Lock in, lock in. Move, move, move. Now Cohen. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Well, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Trubisky now 13 of 15 passing. That's good for 87%. It's first and 10. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. 
Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Now think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on Under a heavy rush and down he goes. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Sack, baby! Lock in, lock in! Now Trubisky on third and long. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Here's Austin. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but he's got it at the 15. Touchdown, Cowboys. Jamez Olawale, 57 yards. And the Cowboys have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through. All the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. Important extra point up and through. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. He's going to let it fly. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off around the 41. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. And that one, oh, it's going to hurt big time. You're in the two-minute drill trying to get your guys down the field, and it's looking like they're going to go up just short as this is definitely not his best throw. And it'll wind up being intercepted. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. That one looks like he'll throw here. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. And now the Bears electing to call a timeout defensively as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Well, the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Trying to lay one up deep. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here. Now in the second half, he's thinking, I guess maybe just take a shot deep. I think you're right. Almost looking for a bailout, isn't he? 
Can my receiver go up and make a big play for me? Can I create a penalty downfield, maybe pick up an interference call or get that yardage downfield? Anything trying to get going again, but you're right. He definitely took a shot. Flush to his right, and that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down, threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary. Incomplete pass. When are these quarterbacks going to learn? You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. This is taken around the 12. A very good return that time. 18 yards, and the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They're down here in a one-score game, but the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not, because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. He's back to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Jalen Smith. And they will set up shop in enemy territory.